2.2 painting part three. So we're going to get into oil paint. I'm going to start here and talk about um, the development of oil paint in the Renaissance, which is that's what we're looking at. This is um, the Northern Renaissance. So there's a few differences that we have in the Northern Renaissance. Their one point perspective is often a little bit different. It's not as, um, I want to say, mathematical as um, the Italians. Um, and this particular piece, oh, and it's more detailed. I was going to say that. It's got like this really amazing looking realistic portraiture here. Now, I don't mean to say, and I think a lot of art students get confused, that things that are more realistic are better. Um, and I wouldn't make that judgment as an artist or as an art appreciator myself. Um, and that really isn't true. But it is impressive to see this level of detail um, in this piece. I mean, every little tiny detail here is, is quite amazing. And we looked at the ambassadors too, um, and that has that level of detail as well. Okay, so I'm going to backtrack. This is oil on wood. What happens more uh, during the Renaissance, it shifts from wood to canvas, and then, of course, almost everything after that is oil on canvas. So here we are, what are we, 400, I'm sorry my math is so poor about this, 500 years later, um, we're looking at N Edward Hopper, Nighthawks, and you look at the, the benefit of oil paint versus tempera, which is previously used, um, is the depth of color and the workability. So you can use oil paint for quite a long time, and they've even found um, when they've done tests in museums, you know, very carefully that, um, and then some accidents have happened over the over the years, that some blobs of paint somewhere in there might still even be a hundred years later a thick blob of paint, which we'll get into impasto in a minute. It's still wet, so it's very interesting medium. It takes a long time to dry. The, the good thing about that is you can work on this over a year or two years or three years or say you get busy um, with another commission or some other body of work then you can leave this and come back to it and you can still work on it. Tempera and Frasco if you recall and Encaustic too you have to be kind of quick and work with it before it dries and before it hardens um, and you could layer on top of those mediums give or take, but with oil paint you can not only layer, you can still get back in there and mix and blend and it doesn't look like you started somewhere and two days later you were over here. You can just keep working all over the painting repeatedly, endlessly. So rich color, depth of depth of color made more realistic details like flesh tones and things you could really get things looking. Because when you look at flesh, it's not flat. You can kind of see into it a little bit, so you want those depth you know, and glass and things like that. So we have glass here. can be very realistic. They did start using it in the Middle Ages, but really the 15th century and what we're talking about here is the Renaissance. That's when it became more common. Linseed oil is the binder. So you have your pigment, the same as you had the same pigment, for instance, with tempera and caustic and fresco, same pigment. We went and got it from whatever vegetable or mineral that we had it and ground it down into a powder and then we mix it now with linseed oil okay flexible and slow drying and the thing too that happens with oil on canvas is they can roll up these giant paintings which this is not one because this is wood but they can roll up these paintings and transport them they no longer have to paint them in the location where they're going to be seen they can travel really easily now without cracking on the wood or something like that. And then they restretch them, put them on a frame, and reframe them. Okay. Oh, the other thing is glazes. Um, so in the Renaissance, this starts, uh, Da Vinci is a big fan of glazes. So what glazes are, there's underpainting and there's glazes, and I'm going to show you underpainting in a minute. But glazes are um, thin coats of a color on top. So you say we're taking our oil and you guys know what olive oil or canola oil looks like. And I throw a tiny bit of pigment in there. So it's mostly just going to be oil. 
on top. So basically I'm putting a coat of clear oil with a tiny bit of, in this case I would say there's like a brown or a, or a yellow in here to tint the whole painting. Now Da Vinci really loved his glazes and in his case it was called sfumato. I don't think we, we go that far here but it looks like smoke almost where it's almost dusky if you look at if you look at the Mona Lisa um, later in our book then you'll see the smokiness that we're talking about but there are some glazes here probably uh, to bring the flesh tones down here a little bit or to make the painting look unified um, yes he's a master he has a masterful use of glazes I'm kinda of forgetting the text on these 